guys, welcome back to a new video and this time we're going to tell you a little story. It's just the story of how Damon was born. Yes. And, uh, it's our birth yeah. story from the start, so from waters breaking to finish to him popping out. So if we just get into it, so first off, my waters, so my waters broke on the 2nd of March at 8.20 in the morning. So as I was about to go to the toilet, so I was pulling my trousers down, there was gunk coming out and I was like, oh my goodness, this is definitely, this is not normal, this is the mucus plug. And then water came out and I was like, this is even weirder. So the first thing that you have to do when your waters break is to call the maternity, like the labour line. So I called the labour line and I said, I think my waters have broke. Basically the lady said to wait a few hours, put some pads on and if the pads like soak full of water, to call back again and more than like my waters probably have broke. So I did that. So I waited like three hours. Ricardo was going to university at this time. I wasn't having yeah. any contractions or anything. Yeah. So I had pads. I changed them because they were getting wet. But it's just like water basically. It's like, it felt like I was peeing myself all the time. So if I would squat down like a gush of water would come out just at random intervals. So I called back the lady and the time I called her back was about half 10. Basically she called the hospital and the hospital said that they're very busy at the moment and that I should call them directly back at 12. And that's QA, so that's the main hospital where I didn't want to give birth. Well, it wasn't like my option. It wasn't my first option. So I called them at 12 and she said, okay, call me again at six. Okay, I'll call Made you again no at six. I guess they were still busy or something. So then I called them at six. In the meantime, as Coral said, I was at university and I was in a lecture and I said to the lecturer, look, I think I need to go home because Coral broke her water. I feel like I need to be closer to her and right now there's nothing really important to me to listen to. So I kind of like rush back and uh, I, we went back home and at the same time I was like excited but I didn't want to get my hopes up as well because Coral did feel like she broke her water before, the, yeah, a couple I'd of days just before. I peed myself. <laughs> but, yeah. getting out of the shower. <laughs> but she thought she did and so I, we were both worry that time the first time we thought that that was the actual time but it wasn't so this time i was like okay i don't want to get my hopes up but i really hope it is i mean we're on the second of march the due date is on the third so then we drove to the hospital at six because we called again at six and they said to come and have a check come in we went there and uh we had the check which was quite weird because what's the point in having a check like how many hours later? It, well, so at eight twenty in the morning. So they didn't officially check to see if my water had broken yeah, until six. eight. Yeah, until eight. So was that ten hours? Is that ten hours? Twelve hours. Twelve hours. In my opinion, twelve hours later, there's no point in checking for the water. They checked and uh, they saw that there was no trace of water. So they had to write down that the waters had not break broken. We were like quite sceptical, we were like, how are you meant to see any water? Surely all the waters must have gone out, obviously you're not going to see any trace. We were just sent home and you started at that point to have mild contractions. I had started having contractions at 4.30. Okay, yeah. They were very, very mild, like I could feel that they were there, but they weren't strong. It was and like very regular. tummy cramps, let's say, yeah. that's how it felt. So yeah, I was really nervous. Oh. Yeah. Ciao. This <laughs> is head in the corner. <laughs> So I was quite annoyed that they couldn't say that my waters had broken just because they put this thing inside me and I coughed and there was no water. And she said, oh, if only you'd brought your pads in. I was like, well, the lady on the phone didn't tell me to bring pads in. Basically, if your waters had broken, they can't leave you past 24 hours. But what could I do? Yeah. It's it's a chain. Pause. Ci facciamo il pannolino. Okay, so I'm do that Okay, contractions during the night. We go home, we have dinner and everything on that night. Throughout the night, I just started having stronger contractions and they were becoming more consistent. Ricardo was sleeping through some of them, but it's okay. Some of them, not all of them. <laughs> some of them. There was a period where you were asleep for like two hours. But oh. to be honest, I, I think I cope for things quite well on my, like on my own rather than having somebody there. I think if somebody's there, maybe sometimes they annoy me a little bit, although Ricardo later on was a big help. But when they got to five minutes apart, they kind of changed a little bit. So they were five minutes and then all of a sudden they started becoming really random. And this was actually at five o'clock in the morning. They started becoming really random. Sometimes I'd get them 10 minutes, sometimes they'd be 15. But when you had them six. at like a 10 and 15 minutes, they were a lot stronger than the other. 
they were. Yeah, they were stronger. Like they, I knew that they were there. Um, I was getting a bit scared, so I called the labour line again. They said not to call until your like contractions are like between four to three minutes. And I said three minutes apart. My contractions had changed so much, and then I was just worried for Damon inside me. So I called him and was like, things have changed. Like I can't really feel the baby moving. That was just me panicking because it was quite early. He was probably asleep, but I was just panicking. So she said, okay we'll get you in to maternity admissions and they can check you out. So we went there and uh, they they were going to check the baby. For some reason, they didn't think to check Cora as well and see how <laughs> dilated it was. So they only checked Damon and uh, they checked that he was all right and he was. He was like, as in heartbeat? Like the heartbeat, yeah. yeah. The heartbeat was okay. He was doing fine. It was actually funny. What did the lady say to you when so you first, first got in? So the first thing that she said, she came into the waiting room and she looked at me and she went, oh, you don't look like a woman who's in active labour. We'll just check you out and send you home. Yeah. So they make their mind like, up okay. already by looking at Cora in her face <laughs> without even checking her. Like, great doctors. Yeah. Thank you very much. So that's what literally they did. They made us wait like 40 minutes in there. Then they called the doctor and the doctor came in and the doctor said we can either uh, induce the birth right now or just wait for it to come natural. Or we can for a stretch and sweep. In a couple of days. Oh yeah. So we were like, what? In a couple of days? We said, okay, we'll book that, but we're pretty sure we're going to get birth <laughs> before that because we were sure that what Coral had that morning or well, the morning before, well, the, the water's breaking. Especially because the, because of the contractions, which she didn't have at all the, during the whole pregnancy. Like the Braxton Hicks Yeah, that, she didn't have that. Obviously, by this point, we were both, like, really annoyed. We'd been sent home like, the night before, saying that my waters hadn't broken. We'd just been sent home by some lady, assuming that I wasn't in active labour. Off we went, back home. I thought we'd be going back home anyway, but it just annoyed <laughs> me that that lady said that. So we came back yeah. home, and that's just where my contraction started. Um, Getting closer. Stronger. Yeah, I basically spent my whole time lying in bed. That's all I did. I just lay in bed. I tried to have a nap because I didn't have any sleep the night before, but it didn't work. So I just suffered my contractions in bed and then... While I was making sandwiches and yeah. food for us to go in the hospital, when the contractions were roughly four minutes apart from each other, and that's yeah. when I started... Getting, they started getting ready. ready, the food ready. Yeah. But and then by that point, the four minutes quickly turned to three minutes apart. Yeah. And <laughs> there was one <laughs> contraction that came two minutes later. I was like, oh, we need to run. Yeah. Run to the hospital. <laughs> so I was there in the kitchen like with Ricardo, like, oh! Oh, just pacing around, <laughs> walking around in circles. Uh, and then trying to, to pull me down from one arm and I was trying to, I'm trying to finish the sandwich. <laughs> Let's hurry, please. So what you then have to do at that point is call the okay. labour line again. So I called the labour line um, and they then called the hospital and then they then called me back and said that St Mary's the hospital I wanted to give birth at didn't have any midwives available. Which makes no sense because it was our due date so there was supposed to have someone ready for that. Well, they don't really. Supposed to. No. Yes, it's a due date. At least they have to have because, someone. But due date's like a rough guide. Nobody still, ever really gives birth on a due date. There's like a zip, like a really low chance of people giving birth on the due date. We had to go to QA and QA at that time of day, so it's two o'clock when I called, at that time of day QA hospital is packed for parking. And I was there like having contractions in the car, like, uh, Really strong wind. <laughs> Yeah, and then in the car park when we got out, because it took us ages to find a car parking space. Oh my goodness, it was a nightmare. <laughs> and then we go in to maternity admissions. And they still don't believe that she's in labour. No, well, they didn't say that. Well, you they can... were not acting like you it's were in just... labour, were they? You can just tell by the look on their face that they're like, oh, you're being a bit dramatic, aren't you? Yeah, exactly. But uh, we were in the waiting room, and this waiting room was full, and I was like, this is embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having my contractions every three Three minutes shoving my face in my coat trying not to make like any noise <laughs> uh, and then the lady calls her name and yep. we get in the room and she says okay yeah your dilation is nine centimeters like what <laughs> already yeah we didn't know and she was like yeah did you come here earlier and we were like yeah we did and she was like oh you were probably already 
donated at that point. Yeah, she so. said you're probably ready in active labour. <laughs> yeah, not like the labour <laughs> said before. She said, oh, they should have checked you. It's actually quite oh. funny to see how every other um, uh, midwife says what they were supposed to do the one before, yeah. but they never do what they're supposed to do. They know what, what other people are supposed to do, but they don't know what they are supposed to do. Yeah. So, so yeah, so the lady was there helping Coral out and... Like my gas and air. Yeah, with the gas and that's air, it. which that's we are not sure. Have. And Coral started having those contractions even stronger and stronger and just midwife three times on that day, I think. Yeah, well, because based, <laughs> the lady that we originally had, she's diabetic, so she needed to eat food, so she needed to go. Yep. So she switched with somebody else. And then this lady, when this lady came, that's when I was like... I need to push. I was like, I feel like I need to push. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they were saying, don't push, even though you feel like you need to, yeah. don't push. I was like, hanging on. I was like, crippling on the bed, like, <laughs> <laughs> Just wait, just wait. And I was there. I, I knew also that I I said I would want to cut the umbilical cord, but by the situation, how it was going, uh, I didn't think I would be able to because it seemed like we were rushing everything. Um, but actually, it took us quite a long time. Like after an hour and a half or something like that, that Coral would have been pushing. That at this point Coral started pushing. I could see Damon's head sometimes coming out, but so they started calling the doctor, and the doctor came because Damon's heartbeat was going down, was dropping. The doctor said, "Well, the baby is making the decision for us, so we can't wait any longer. Either need to how do you?" No, uh, she basically said. We need to cut you and yeah. to use the suction cup. It was like a suction right. cup or something. Yeah. And and at that point that Coral felt like she was having another contraction, she just said, I'm having another contraction. So the doctor said, okay, just have this one and then we'll do the whole thing. We'll wait for you to have this contraction. But at that contraction, she pushed so hard that Damon's head came out. <laughs> They did yeah. cut me at the same time. Obviously I didn't feel it because they prepared me before by injecting me, I guess, yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Also, she ended up with a third degree pet, which is a cut that goes oh. from the vagina to the butt. <laughs> <laughs> so know. basically, <laughs> where they cut me, <laughs> they cut me, and then as he was coming out, he tore me even more. So he tore a muscle in my bum. It was a very traumatic experience for me, to be honest. Yeah. I was pushing and pushing for ages. I was losing energy, my strength was going. Ricardo was trying to help me, trying to tell me like how I should be pushing and breathing and everything. And that did help because I wasn't doing it properly. So Ricardo yeah. was like, you need to push, like, don't shout, just put all your energy down in like your bum and push. Yeah, hold your breath. So yeah, hold my breath. So I was doing that. But and then he just still wasn't coming out. I, I was able to push like twice during a contraction and the third time I was just like, like yeah, really trying like... but nothing was happening so it's a shame that obviously it did have to be cut but an hour had passed an hour and a half had passed and he still was an hour and normally that's quite a quick stage but it just wasn't for me i had my eyes closed the whole time as well so i did not look at anything i didn't even see him being pulled out so i was like in the position where you've got your legs up here they put me up here so i was literally like like this <laughs> like super squash so uncomfortable eyes closed and i only opened my eyes when he was on me with a blanket wrapped around and that's the only point I opened my eyes because I just I was so traumatized by the whole thing. <laughs> so they made Damon latch to corals uh, for feeding the first time, but not for a very long time. Literally two sucks, and then uh, they had to take coral down to the theatre to stitch her up. They normally like stitch up your normal tear there, but because I had the vertebrae tear, I had yeah. to be taken to the operating theatre. Yeah. While coral was gone, there were like three midwives and the doctor. The doctor said, "Okay, you two come with." me and the third midwife stays here with the dad and the baby and uh, I was given Damon in my hands in my arms and uh, everyone was gone literally even the third midwife that was supposed to stay with me she left yeah she's with me I had no clue what to do so I was there singing <coughs> oh he was fine he was good anyway he wasn't complaining about anything luckily I'm saying it's all very traumatic for me because I've just given birth to a baby 15 minutes later I'm being whisked off to surgery to have my bum sewn up so I literally get to hold him for all of like five minutes the first time I've been in a theatre it was such a weird experience it was so weird like I was completely calm about everything because I was just so out of it like whatever was going on I just had no like care in the world I was like just to sort me out and get me out. <laughs> so I had my body from just below my chest down to my feet was numb so I couldn't feel a thing and that 
I couldn't feel anything until midnight. That was that, really. I, I want to give my personal opinion. And I thought that going in England, because the hospitals look so good, because this was a public hospital, and it looks like a private hospital in Italy, at least in Rome. And I thought even the doctors and nurses in there would have been pretty good and well prepared. And in my opinion, I have to say, nothing like the Italian health system. The Italian health system would have dealt this with the situation a lot better. So this is our little story and I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions that maybe we forgot about yeah, anything, anything. We didn't mention, anything yeah. you want to know. Just let us know in the comments below. Because obviously there's a lot more details that we haven't yeah, kind of like passed over, but this is like brief explanation of it. So yeah. don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you in our next video sometime soon. This yes. week. Bye. See you guys. Bye.